we are now on extract ul oh wait no this is the one that we've been on never mind not this one so we can now mark you as complete and now we are on respond with body in this stage you'll implement the echo string endpoint which accepts a string and returns it in the response body so it's a mirror that's that's what i'm getting a response body is used to return content to the client. This content may be an entire web page, a file, a string, or anything else that can be represented with bytes. Your echo string endpoint must return a 200 response with a response body set to given string and with a content type and content length header. Here's an example of an echo string request. Okay, so they're going to do a get request to echo ABC along with and their headers, and then a response is gonna be a 200 okay, content type text plain, uh, content length, so we're gonna have to do that, and then the ABC. Oh, interesting, okay, so I always thought that the body was gonna go in here, between the RN and the RN. I thought it was gonna go there, but it's, because I do carriage return headers. Oh, I see, because there's a carriage return between each header, that's why they need two carriage returns to denote the end of the header section. That's, that's how that works. Okay, got it. The two headers are required for the client to be able to parse the response body. Note that each header ends in a uh, carriage feed and, or carriage return, and the entire header section also ends in a CRLF. And then they'll run our stuff and it'll be all great. So if I run this, let's bring up Insomnia. So we want to go to, I think this is our server. Not right now. Uh, we're getting to 404 not found, but we want to just go to, yeah, we go to slash like that. So we want echo and then ABC is our test case. And we get a 404 not found, which is kind of to be expected. Now, right now we're checking this path as slash. And if it is slash, we just return an okay. Otherwise we do something else. And I kind of wonder if we want to create a router for this. Now I'm, I'm not necessarily thinking of like making this handle any type of router thing, but putting the router into its own file and then it run maybe its own functions that are like listed somewhere else could be helpful in sort of figuring this out. So, cause we got the request and then we want to, based upon that, I guess like go and if I do the routes, I, I think that I want to create a folder for the router. So we have our library main method. Okay, so let's let's take we'll just call it routes. We'll do modular s. And then the other one that I want to do, I guess we have two right away, right? We have we have just the the okay on slash. So we'll call this like home dr s and Echo better s. We'll go into here. Let's just mod routes this. I'll just call this routes, or maybe maybe oh, this could be um router. We want to bring in the request. I should I take ownership of this? I don't see a reason why I shouldn't take ownership. So I'm just gonna take that for right now. So request. We're gonna turn a result anyhow, and I probably want a response of like what we're going to send as a response. And there is no response yet. So we're going to create a new one. Do I need default? I probably don't. I probably just want response. Um, let's do debug. And we'll just do that for right now. And I want an HTTP code so we can do a like pub code. That'll be the HTTP code that we care about. And we know we want the body. Now, do I care about like the difference between JSON and and like the text? Because that that could be really interesting. I think though, maybe not. So we'll just have this be a string. Uh, let's see, HTTP code, you need to now implement debug. Okay, so you're just upset that I'm not using you. That's fine. So we're gonna turn a response. Let's throw a to-do in here so it doesn't yell at us. Um, okay, so in here, if we want to use this, we need to call the handle request, or we need to call the router, and it's going to give us the response back, 
which then we're going to then send to response, which instead of response code will now be like the full response. Okay, makes sense. So I kind of want to do something like this. Let response equals, can you not find that? Routes router, hand it, the request, context, um, routing request, there. Okay, excellent. You are happy. You're no longer happy because this is no longer, we gave ownership to the router and that's okay. So we need to update send response to now handle this new request thing. So I probably just want to pass in response. You're gonna be upset because, well, we're not doing anything with you. So this is the response, which is gonna be an owned response. Okay, so now I have, I have this like let response equals this entire thing. And I kind of want to build this off of the response, don't I? And then we write, then we write this out and then we respond, response as bytes. And then that comes out from this. Okay. So I kind of want to build the response and then it gives us this out, which code. And then we now know that the body goes here and then we have, I think it was this then headers. So like another CRF, CRLF headers and then two CRL, CRLFs. But let's not worry about that right now. So uh, let's do an impl response pub function. Uh, we could, I could call it build, uh, but we could also do like as bytes. Let's do a result. Okay, I think that's correct. I don't think we have anything that we care. Oh no, we do care about this. What, what are you? You are, is just a, okay. So as bytes gives us a reference to U8. Interesting. Wonder, uh, we're going to have fun lifetimes with this. Cause if I, if I just do that, unless Elysian can handle it, which I don't think it's going to be able to maybe cannot find response code. Okay. So let's not worry about you. Let's grab you not in there in here. And we are creating you as a function right now. So let's, we get the response and we do an okay response as bytes. Okay. And so then instead of the response code like this, uh, unfortunately we're going to have to do a self dot code here. Can I return value referencing local variable response? Oh, that's what the problem is. Okay. So the response as bytes doesn't, because if I create the string here, uh, yeah. What is the headers is part of or not? I'm going to have to put headers as part of response. Once, once we get to the headers, we're going to add those in. So that's, that's where they're going to go eventually. Uh, I wonder, you know, it's going to be easier for me to just say, okay, response, this just becomes a string. We do something like that. Let's do our code equals self dot code and only doing that. So I can just throw the code in like this. Cause I don't think I, I can't, I can't do like self dot code here. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it doesn't allow me to do that. So just to make that look a little bit nicer, we'll do this. Um, I don't need to move you out. Okay, so now we response as bytes. So I can do, oh, it's gonna be a response as bytes as bytes. Uh, we should rename this to be instead of as bytes, um, maybe like create or, We'll just do this as a build now. So I build that as bytes. Oh, uh, context building response string as bytes there. And then that makes that happier. Okay. And then we know that body is going to go at the end of here like that. Um, let's see Deepak. Hello. How are you doing today? My thoughts on which framework higher job opportunities, Axim or Actix. You know, that's really tough because there's not that many job opportunities in either of them right now. So it's sort of like predicting the future a little bit. I would love to say that most hiring managers wouldn't care as long as you know one or the other, it's going to be good enough. But it's, it's also a little bit hard to tell whether or not that's true too. 
Uh, I've definitely seen some recruiters and hiring managers and especially HR who don't really understand the diff like understand that if you know one that is pretty easy to get into the other. I think it's going to also depend upon what region you're in. If you're in an area that like, because over here in the United States, each state seems to have its own culture of like what technology to use. Like for example, for a while everybody was using uh Ruby on Rails for their web applications in in silicon valley but then over here in denver everybody was using uh node.js express and react um there's a certain part of denver in which replaced react with angular it so it's it's regional unfortunately um but because because rust is so new I don't actually know if it matters that much as if you know rust you're already ahead of the curve with most other people who might be applying so i think i'm gonna have to go with that fun answer of it depends and it's 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 hard to say i think that um networking to find out what those specific job opportunities are are looking for and trying to use networking as a way to sort of get around that you learned one or the, over the other is probably where to go does that help, Deepak? I, it's kind of a non-answer answer, unfortunately, but I don't have a good one. And I don't have like a, a bead on the Rust job market right now. None of the recruiters that I sort of hang out with, like they, they're starting to have to learn what Rust is, but that's it. Like, it's just like, oh, do you know Rust as opposed to do you know any technologies in Rust yet? Okay, so um, it should be code. Uh, you're saying you're never constructed did but i'm using display for you and that's where the display is being used okay so we build because then a response build context as bytes and that sends it all back okay so theoretically wait wait am i send a response am i never sending a response no i do oh, i send a response right here so this should be good now wait no because i don't do anything with the router that's what it is uh, Custard, hello, how are you doing today? I think the Google Microsoft backing of Rust needs to bed in a little bit yet for there to be more jobs. So my my reading on the job market in Rust right now is that we're still in the don't need to really talk to recruiters yet part of it because there's so few jobs that a lot of companies I think are just hiring devs and teaching them Rust or they're firing, finding Rust jobs, Rust devs for those jobs through a networking side of things. So I don't think we're really hitting all of the standard ways that people get jobs outside of networking yet. That's, that's my guess. Skimmis, hello, how are you? Most Rust jobs seem to be around Europe right now and almost anything you see around North America either requires domain specific knowledge in addition to Rust or needs five to 10 years experience at least. And oddly, you're seeing US hiring EU Rust devs. That's interesting. But yeah, we're still in that super weird phase for a new technology. Uh, I don't know if any, do any of you remember when React uh, was a, like just starting out and people were hiring for React? It was like, you need to have React with like, you know, five years of experience, like the year that it came out. Or it was also like, you need to have like, you know, some most places, Places were like, eh, if you just know Angular, we don't care. Like, you've never touched React before? That's fine. These days, it's probably more of like, hey, look, you at least need to have used React a little bit, but that's because it's so pervasive and big now. So that's my guess, is like, we're still at that stage right now in the Rust job ecosystem, but this is all speculation and guesses because I don't have, I don't really know any companies directly hiring for Rust yet. Everybody who, every recruiter or company that sent me a message right now is still talking about JavaScript and, or Python or PHP or something like that. Okay, so for the router, um, here's where we want to probably match on the route. So if we, uh, let's see, how do we want to do this? I could, we could do a double match. So if I do a match on the request path, because I'm not planning on making something as nice as Axim here. It's, it doesn't need to be as nice. 
Uh, Tone, hello. I'm using Actix Web. It seems more popular. Uh, Actix Web is also older, so that makes a lot of sense. Plus, Actix Web is past the 1.0 sort of gate, gate, keep gateway. I don't know what the right word for that is. But because they're like, what, 3 point something, 4 point something, uh, they're, they're definitely past the 1.0 sort of like a um, uh, milestone. Uh, that's going to scare a lot of people less than something like Axum, which is on 0 0.7.5, which is definitely a thing. Like I've, I've actually noticed a lot of, there, there's been a lot of people on like Discord that I've seen. It's like, why aren't more like, you know, why, aren't, why isn't like you or Axum or something else being adopted more by companies? And my, my response always has been, why isn't that 1.0? Like, we've, we've got to make it 1.0. We've got to give some kind of reliability that things aren't going to change and break overnight. Because that's usually what happens is like, oh, yeah, 0 0.7.5. Um, be aware, we might just break everything tomorrow. Good luck. Uh, that's not, no company's going to want to use that. That's silly talk. Only individuals like me are going to be interested in doing that. But I also have like, uh, I'm also doing it for learning it so I can teach it. So like I, I'm not a typical use case for it. I don't know, that's my, my personal thoughts is that we need to start seeing more 1.0 releases in, in the Rust ecosystem to have it be adopted more. Okay, so it's 4.9. Yeah, and it's had a fair number of breaking changes, but like look at, look at our competitors, right? Like um, let's see, Express is probably like the oldest one for Node.js. That's on what five something worth at least three something. Uh, they're sl they slow down development quite a bit. So anybody choosing to start an express project now, we might, you know, they they might receive a lot of um, flack from the community for like, oh, you're starting with an old project, but also it's stable. It's not changing very much at all. Laravel that. Well, they just got a bunch of funding, so it's it's hard to tell. They might have a bunch of updates coming because of that. But they've been pretty stable for a long time. They're they're on what like version sixteen or eighteen now. They um they have breaking changes. Everybody has breaking changes. the 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 question is, are those breaking changes coming relatively recently? Like sorry, relatively often, or are they coming uh at a sort of like a regular cadence? That's what I think we need to like sort of think about. What are you? You are a string. So I want a aster. And let's also to lowercase that just in case. And so we can start doing things like, okay, so if you're slash, uh, we're going to send you somewhere. If it's a thing like that, I don't need you. Uh, if you're echo, you're echo, and then something. Ooh, so that's we need we need to handle we need to handle a um the equivalent of something like that, which uh I can't I can't do a pattern like that, can I? In in a match? That'd be really awesome if I could. And then everything else we need to go into a handle 404. So let's change these to unimplemented. Uh sorry, to do. Okay, so this would hopefully return. Let's just say that this uh, gets our response. We're gonna do something with that and then they will return a response from there. Okay. So if we do our to do, so that was the hello, I think, or home. Just a singular mod home, I think is enough for this. So if we do pop function home, we know it's on slash. What are we gonna return? We're gonna return just the okay. So I probably want to return a response. Let's just say that we always return a result and a response. So we're just doing okay, response, a code is gonna be HTTP code, okay. And then a body is just gonna be an empty string. So then you are gonna be, we're gonna call home, home. That gives you you, so we're gonna get our response equals to you, that's the response, okay, response. So that no matter what, we get a response back from this. So that's, that's the idea. 
you haven't been in the JS land for a while back when you were back when you were in, back when it was express was the old thing and people were moving towards Koa instead, but it looks like that didn't kick, take off and express is still the king. Uh, that being said, like I was watching CJ do a, a stream like last year and that was not, what was that? He used like feathers or something. I don't remember what it was. There was there was some uh, there was some like alternate thing that everybody was starting to switch over to from Express. That's that's what I remember from that. Uh, TV Josh, hello. How are you doing today? Am I a Code Crafters employee, a shill, or just a fan? I am not an employee. Uh, I I guess like of those three options, I am a shill. Uh, yeah. So I'm a they they gave me a VP a VIP status. So I um I um uh I have a, an affiliate link for it. Uh all right. So let's see. Now these other to-dos I think will be fine and they shouldn't get hit as long as I just go with slash. So uh I do need to put commas in here. Then you're happy. Some warnings. That method for the request, we're still not reading for that, and that's okay for right now. Um yeah, should that be okay? Should we update that? I kind of feel that we need to, okay, so we match. Okay, so this is the path. And then should we do path? Oh, should we do path first? Or do I do the method first? Because I could also do something like this. That response equals request.method. That is method get is our only one. And then from here, we do more, we do this entire thing. Um, you're upset. Let's see, method get. Oh, I'm missing you. Expected result response error. You're not in a function block. Okay, so we do the home, we get out. I guess you go out of here into here. Expected result response error. Oh, because you're just method now. Okay, so based upon the method, if you're a get, I then check the path. I then, if you're slash on a get, I do this entire thing. You respond with a result response, not a method. These are the two are to do's. Why are you method? Okay, is that unexpected closing delimiter? Do I have too many? Oh. Okay, expected one of blah, else an operator, okay. Okay, fun, fun times. You're already lost with all these modules. Oh, sorry about that. Um, let's see, I, which parts are you lost on? We can, um, we can discuss and go over them. I know you mentioned that you were pretty new to modules and, and Rust, right? Because we can look at our directory structure here is, is like this. So we can see, all right, we have our, our main library, that's sort of like where everything is running, right? And then we just have a bunch of little methods, little stuff here. And then routes is its own file because I can have like the route handlers alongside the main router sort of function here in mod. I wonder, would it make sense for me to throw that over here to the left? Do we have room for the code to do that? Because I could, I can do something like this, make it, Nice and small, go into source. Uh, that that needs to be way too big up there. That's that's not helpful. Um, okay, let's try down. It still takes up quite a bit of space, even when I'm going down. If I could do our tree, but not have all of this stuff up here, that would be that would be much more helpful. Yeah. Um, what is, okay, yeah, so I'm using ERD. I wonder if I can do ERD, um, there we go. That's, that's what I need to do. So that doesn't give me anything else. So if I take you, ooh, um, oops. Well, that's fun. Now this is way over here on the right, which is not what I wanted. Once I, once I accidentally screw up the, um, uh, how, how everything works in, um, whatever, whatever, what is it called? How, how I've got everything set up in, um, uh, Zellage here. 
if I screw it up, then it's like, oh, I've got to sort of like start that over again. Right, let's do this again. So go over there like that. We throw you like there. We move you over here. We resize you to that. Um, now I still have sizes, right? Can I do, so why if we're inverted that no get stuff, just give me the name. That gives me the hidden, f no, the hidden files are there regardless. Uh, man ERD. Oh, suppress size. Suppress size is probably what I want. So I want, that's what it is. Okay. I'm mean, going to love to have that and then get rid of everything else. So you only see this over here, but for right now, this will, this will have to be good enough. So then if I CD into source, do that. There we go. You're still looking, uh, for a good guide to some Tylene managers right now. I like Zellige. Um, I like it a little bit more than Tmux and then I used to use screen all the time. For those of you who remember screen, and know know what that is. Let's see, is this a good one? Yeah, this is a good size. Um, I don't think that I can in Zellige basically say like, now this is what you are. That'd be really nice if I could do that, but I don't think I can. Okay, I'm not gonna worry about it too much. All right, so what are you upset about? You're upset because it expected one of something else. And so we have, oh, request method, which is gonna be actually just a method like this. That That's perfectly fine. So let response equals request that method. And then we open, we open you. And then method get, so the, the first one we have here, so method get, and then I do this match. Okay, so let's go undo this. So we have our first sort of method. This works here. And if I want to do this over again, so let's do res equals match request method, and we do like that. And so I do method get like that. And now I, let's just say I take you, throw you in here, and I return with the response. Okay, that's much better. What are you upset about? Can I find value response? Oh, because it's res. So now you can be response here uh we can then get rid of you and you uh no semicolon so it just responds like that okay there we go much better this time so now just not found not being used which is not found do i have a not found i don't so that'll be you so we'll have to do a response so I want to create a builder for response. I don't know if I if I care about that. So our code is going to be HTTP code not found. And then body is going to be a string new. Okay, no warnings, no errors. Um, up here behind chat, I'm just going to go ahead and run, run the server. So that was a cargo watch x run, except I need to be running the directory. Okay, starting to listen. If I run this again, so not the echo because we have that as a to do. So if we just go to slash, we still get a to do. Okay. And I, as you can see, we still get a bunch of stuff printed out. So perfect. Everything, everything is looking good so far. Uh, so echo now this is going to be the interesting thing, right? Now echo, I put a, a star in there. I don't think this is going to work because if I do just echo ABC, we get a 404 not found instead of a uh, an actual like crash, which is what we were hoping for. Um, five IQ, which which chatter? Uh, hello, how are you doing today? Do you think a matchmaking app for dogs who can't get laid is a good idea for a portfolio project? Um, remove the remove the can't get laid part, and absolutely, I think that it is. There's there's a lot of people who do sort of Twitter for animals projects. Uh, we've had several students who have done that in the past. And I, I, I always think that they're hilarious and great. Uh, Supercuber, hello. How are you? And then Limanox, how are you doing today? Um, okay, so patterns, patterns, patterns. Um, 
Oh, you're doing HTTP server with, but only standard. Oh, okay. Well, that's, that's more restrictive than me. So matching, matching on strings or stirs based upon a regular expression, I think is what we're going for here, right? Can I do something like that in, in match statement? So that'd be like, what, what rust match stir pattern start there. So that's, I mean, not exactly what I want. Strings against patterns. So this is a stack overflow. You can create a master regex that captures all the interesting components and then build a vector of all the captured pieces. This vec can be then can then be matched against. So there's their input. Create a regex that matches on a union of all commands. So question mark like one unknown number of x the word next or previous or go to string plus digits. And that's one, right? One or more. Emo Giraffe, hello, how are you doing today? Greetings from Egypt. Well, welcome from Egypt. Awesome to have you here. Okay, execute the regex. So captures, so we take the input. Okay, so you take the regex and then you captures the input, and then you can map over the captures, and then you collect it into a vector, match against the captured values as a slice. So as ref match as a slice. Okay, so if it's one of these, then go and do that thing. Okay, we can try this. This seems like it would work. You're a never regexer? Oh, you're, okay, so I was, Back in a previous life, I was a, um, a systems administrator, and regex is pretty well suited for systems administration work. Like so many times, they're just like tiny little things where like, okay, let's just regex it out, or hey, we need to just change this one thing, so we pull out sed or awk or something like that. And there's like regex type things that are going on in there. So for for me, it's one of those things where like I don't like to do super complex regex stuff. But really basic things, perfectly fine, I think. Uh, what's an HTTP server? I know what a server is. An HTTP is an internet protocol. So think of um, think of like the HTTP server that we're creating here is the backbone part of the HTTP servers that you're using as a framework. So for example, in Actix Web or Axum, this is the equivalent of like Tower that they're that they're using behind the scenes. We're grabbing stuff from the client as it's coming in, we're parsing it, creating a request, and then handing that over, in this case, to ourselves. But in like Tower's case, it's being handed to Axum or Actix Web or, or something like that. If we go to another language like um, Express, that is, uh, what are the, they're using, well, I can't remember what Express uses behind the scenes, but they use something else behind the scenes that sort of handles this for us too. Okay. So let's let's try this because this is actually fairly easy to read. So if uh, I'm gonna put this onto the other screen so I can reference it. So if over here we just say let our, I mean essentially this is like the routes um, the routes expression equals we're gonna do ooh is regex regex is a um, is a crate isn't it? Yeah, extern create regex. So this might be the first. Oh, so that's, yeah. So anyhow, bytes in this error is the only thing that we're given by default, but we can add our own. So just spit on slash for now. Don't do regex. Okay. Let's see how far we can get without doing regex. I'm okay with that. So if I split on slash, it's going to do it on both, on both sides, right? Because like, then we're going to get... Let's just try this. So if I do um, paths, oh, it's segments. You get segments equals request dot path dot divide one string slice into two at an index, not that. Split the string into two at the given byte. No, um, not index. An iterator over substrings of the string slice separated by characters matching byte a pattern. Okay, so that's the one. An iterator over substrings. Okay, so let's do split. And our pattern is just the character slash. So that gives us 
that gives us that, right? Am I doing raw TCP stream? Yes, we are. Game stylist, hello. How are you doing today? Okay, so that gives us an iterator segments, and that's gonna be nothing at all. So I'm kind of I'm kind of curious. If I debug the segments, what do we see? Can I see anything? Are you gonna be happy with this? Uh, the rest of this should actually still work as expected, right? So if we do our get to slash like this, you see get a 200 okay, and then we get to see segments is this split, split internal. Here, let me make this full size. Start zero, end one, the matcher. Okay, so we get to see, okay. Now if I get, if I did more of these, it won't crash. It'll just give us a, a 404 here. Let's just we'll make this bigger. So if I say echo ABC, so that's the full haystack. The needle is what we're going for. Oh, that doesn't give me what, okay. I thought it was gonna have the data, but no, this, this split is the split internal. It doesn't actually have all the things debugged out for it. Okay, so if I wanted to see all of these segments, I think I have to, for segment in segments, maybe debug these. Okay, so nothing at all for slash, echo for the first one, and then ABC for the second one. Okay, so that, make, that makes sense. That works. Uh, I'll, I'll, let me see if I can pronounce this even close to correct. El Hijo del Viento. Uh, Hello, how are you doing today? And sorry if I butchered your username. But uh, greetings from Argentina, nice. Uh, LMS done? Oh yeah, we've, uh, I haven't worked publicly on the LMS for a while. I've done some minor little things here and there uh, for the LMS uh, sort of off stream, but we haven't done anything on stream for that for a while. Right now we're working on a Code Crafters Build Your Own HTTP uh, in Rust challenge. Uh, okay, so that segment works so what i probably want to do is get the first segment right so if i get the first segment i just run next on this right so if i say match on segments dot next that gives me an option a string okay was this a sum it's a sum with nothing right so match on segments next so if i could say a sum of nothing like that you would be this and then if you're echo which you're not slash it's just echo is the next segment so if this i guess the first segment right so if, if the first segment is echo like that then i want to send this on over to echo so we're going to care about the next segment, right? Why not store function pointers and route strings and match on them? Um, let's see. Why not store function pointers and route strings and then match? Uh, I mean, I could. Is there a reason not to? I don't know. It's a good question. I don't know about the function pointers. I don't know if I need, I need those at all. But like for the, the, the paths and the, the route itself, I could just mount match on like the full string and that would be fine. And it could, I, instead of like a match, I could just do a full if statement, if else if. Is that, is that what you were thinking of? Or am I just sort of way off on that one? That's how you're doing it. You usually parse path in the request stage and just match on the route after building the qualified path from the request path. So in the request stage, you're, Matching on the route after building the qualified. Okay, hold on. I don't know if I, I don't know if my brain is fully grokking, uh, parsing, understanding what you're, what you're, uh, what you're saying. Um, so instead of here in the request, you already have a pointer to the function route it's going for. So like when building a request, that's when you also figure out the routing stuff have i heard about next weekend's event from ladybird browser to write browsers i have not no i haven't is that like an uh, event to like actually build a browser from scratch that sounds fun oh the other thing that i could do is like probably not in a router here 
I could probably split in the request. Okay, an ad started, so we probably need to take a break before we continue on. Uh, let's see. Okay, for example, if you have a path slash path slug, I will get path value in the request. Okay, so like in the request struct as slash path value or path fresh mark query string equals value. I create a path slug from that string and match with the one I store. Okay. Hmm. So that would be that'd be part of request here. And we can definitely do something with that. So oh yeah, and we have these two spaces. I can get rid of this now. Uh Toto, uh hello, how are you doing today? Okay, so yeah, we have like method and I have um path is just a string here. And I could put like a query param inside of here. Like you don't understand why do you need to split on slash if you're going to match anyways? It's I need to don't I need a match to figure out which method, which route handler to run? So like I need to I need to figure out what the the path is. And then from the path, then I need to say, hey, I want to run these route route handlers based upon that. That was like my thought process on it. It's sort of like building the client and the server, sorry, not the client, sort of like building the framework part of Axum router, but also the like the user endpoint, the handlers all, all together at the same time. Those route handlers have specific paths, right? Well, so that's the question is like, how do I, how do I match the paths that those route handlers are going to run on to the paths that we get, we extract out that that's where like my brain is going like, how do I do this? Like my first thought was like, oh, I just match, right? It's like, that's the part where it's like, okay, where, where do I sort of like hook those up in my head? And once I have that, then it becomes easy, right? Because here it's like, I need to know. First, you need to parse your query params and find the qualified path, the syntax of your path, syntax of my path, and then math with the syntax you have. I don't know if I fully understand that. Um, so if we're basically saying like, okay, if I'm, if I'm on like something like slash, which in this one would be nothing at all if I do the, 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 the split. In this one, there is no query params. So app get, okay. So app get user ID name equals Lamanox. I could be dumb and match on a slice of segments. Uh, that would be multiple slices, right? Then like, I feel like this is pretty, I feel like this is pretty dumb already. So Lamanox, where does that app get go? Like at app get is like the, the at isn't, isn't like proper Rust syntax. So where would I be putting that? Because I that does look a lot like what you could do in, in Axum as a writer of, you know, you're, you're building the server using Axum. Yeah, it's, it's, that's sort of what I have here because I could do a match on like some nothing here and then some on Echo. And then that gives me like on the first, so the first response, the, the first segment is going to be always the first thing after slash. Oh, okay. So browser jam, 13th through the 15th. Oh, it's a full jam. Uh, I don't know if I have time for anything like that right now. The, I, I'm giving myself time to do a jam for, for, um, uh, I was, I am going through like all the different technologies in my head and I'm getting every single one except the right technology. It's, uh, what is it called? Um, anathema. I was going like alacrity, no, zellage, no, um, all those, all the different technologies. Like, no, it's, it's anathema. I'm, I'm keeping my, my schedule free for the anathema jam once that happens, which I don't know when it's going to happen. For Axum, they do macros to build a route handler from the function you provide. So if I could not do a, a macro for that, because this is going to be super simple, right? Like I'm not trying to do like a full out, like production ready server for this. I don't think I really, I don't really think I, I need to do that. So I want something simpler than using a full, like something that's going to work for all the challenge parts of these, if that makes sense. 
So what can I do without a macro and without a third party library, if possible? The you match part is what you're watching. Well, right. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to, to figure out is the your match part. So I could, we could move this out of the router and into the request and put something in there where it's like, okay, we get the segment. It kind of makes sense maybe like to throw the segments into there and get that off of the request. And then we can get the first segment and then build it off of here. Need a list of your paths before you match. So, I mean, the, the two paths that I have right now would be slash and slash echo. And then we have an unknown number of future ones coming in too that we're going to be adding in as part of the challenge. So I guess you're trying to make a separate router library versus application code. Yeah, and I'm not trying to create a separate one for, for this project. It's, it's like, it's basic, simple, like, let's see, we're going to read header, concurrent connections, return a file, read a request body. I don't think it's going to be that much of everything else. So I think we should be fine. Am I trying to build a general web server? No, absolutely not. This is a, this is a web server that's going to pass this challenge. So yeah, we we're we're just building something that can pass the challenge, and that's fine. And Asitsu, you had you had something. It's a dangerous site. Wait, what's what's dangerous about it? Well, okay. What are you yelling at me about? When I said like show me the details, it didn't say me what what it was. Huh, interesting. Yeah, okay. So just mass match my paths. Don't worry about query params for right now. All right. Uh yeah, Asitsu, I don't know what's going on with that. My my arc said that that's a dangerous site and doesn't tell me why, which is strange. Okay, so let's, let's, I think, I do like the, the request, the, the paths. Try another browser, sure. If I copy you, let's try Firefox. Yeah, same, same on Firefox. That is a, that is a good warning to freak people out. That is, that is a well-designed warning. See details? Let's see, what are they gonna put in the details? Interesting. Okay, so this this has a little bit better information. PaceRS has been reported as containing harmful harmful software. So I haven't. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Um. They got blacklisted. Wasn't there another Pace that wasn't RS? And the site could be compromised too. That's that's like it's like one of different several things that could be happening with it, right? I don't have any sort of like isolated systems right now that I can test that on. Oh yeah, with like those, yeah, there has been quite a few, what was it? There was, was it PHP or Python had like a big, a big sort of like a man in the middle attacks with their, not man in the middle. It was a lot of libraries that were being used were, were compromised. I don't remember what it was though. It might've just been Python, but like Python is used everywhere. So that kind of sucks. Um, okay. So anyways, if I do, if I do segments like this, so that's, uh, I'll refactor this later. So if we do echo, echo, and then I want the next one, right? Well, the next one we know is going to be the segments next to pass that in. Um, and then do you're done with that. And then I want you to be anything else, which would be some anything is going to be this response like you. Okay. So if I do that, uh, what are you upset about? Expected zero arguments found one. So echo, uh, I want the params, query param. Wait, this is not query param. This is a path param. So the path param, which is, I think this was a stir like that. And I will respond with a, Let's just do a result and a response. Now, in this case, what I expect to send back is our code is going to be a 200 OK. It should be code. And then our body is going to be the path param. Let's just to own that. And then we'll do an OK response. OK, so we do that. We'll context you and just say, um, Echo, let's see, processing echo handler, 
that. That's okay. Segments. Okay, so expected a reference. Oh, it's an option. Um, I forgot that. Okay, so we do have an option like that, which means we want a let some um body. It's not really body. This is gonna be some um param equals the path param. Yeah, path param. Like that. Wait, no, else. If it's else, our response is going to be slightly different. I want to do an early. Oh, you know what we can do? We just do an early return. So we can just do bail and just say um, missing path param. We do that. Then we get a response from this. So instead of path param, this is now a param. Okay. To own you and then back. You need to be mutable. Okay, so some response. I why am I forgetting that fat arrow? It's weird. Um next. Non-exhaustive patterns. None not covered. Right. Okay. So then if you're in none, so if you're none, we should just crash. So if you're a none, uh let's just panic. And then we'll should we panic? We should bail. Should bail and say uh un Let's see, did not, not get any segments. Okay, so you're happy. Need a semicolon there. Okay, then just warnings. Okay, so now we can take you out. Then we have a response. Okay, and then everything is happy. Yeah, then we're just not caring about this method yet, but let's test this again. So you're, you're running. If we hit you, that hits with a 200 okay. Okay. We got a 200 okay. And if I go to anything else, we got a 200 okay. That's not good. Um, I missed a bunch of stuff. Hold on. What did I miss about? Oh, okay. You got a play rest link. Hold on. Let's let me take a look at that. Okay. So path. Okay. So we do a string from. So this would be our path that's incoming uh, segments. Okay. So path trim matches slash. Split it slash. Oh, so it's only this one. Collect into a vector. Match on the segments. So if it's that, there's no path. Basically, that's just slash nothing. Otherwise, oh, it's echo and param. Oh, I like this a lot more. This is so much better. I like it. Certainly not the most efficient solution, but we don't need it to be efficient now. I like that. Yes, but the extra symbols make you look like a real programmer. Um, as you would have done as slice, uh, I guess that could work too. Okay. Let's, let's try implementing this. I like that. Um, and it might make it easier for me to have my thing actually work the way we want it to. So you can also use comma dot dot to ignore other segments. Oh, I'm on a good approach as well. This solution will get complicated for query params. Oh, you're right. That will get complicated for query params. And then for my, oh yeah, so that's, that's a good question. I don't know. I don't know which way to go with it. Um, I don't even know if we're going to do query params. I would assume that we're going to do query params. It doesn't say that query params are going to actually be a thing. So it's, it's hard to tell. So maybe what we'll do is we'll just get this working right now. And then we'll keep copy link address. And then I'm going to throw in here. All right, so this is a uh, router for the uh, router for the server. There are many ways we could handle this. Um, alter, alterna, alternative suggestions. Okay, so let's do sit. Yeah, it's TSU, right? Sit two, yeah. Sit two um, has this one. Just realize the chat window in a stream is the opposite direction of the chat in Twitch. Wait, really? Oh, that's weird. Uh, Code Man, hello. How are you doing today? Oh, you start up the HTTP series from tomorrow. Nice. Well, obviously, I won't be um, active on it at that time. But if you have any questions, just leave them in comments, and we'll, uh, you know, I'll do my best to to respond. Okay, so I'm gonna keep yours in there. It's to if we ever want to go back into it, we can now go grab that in the future.
Okay, so in this case, if I get... Now, I was trying to say, like, hey, if you're not found, because the first segment was nothing, I wanted this not found, right? But what's happening is I'm getting a 200 okay, which should not be a bail. I don't think we got any of that, right? Looping while getting chunks, method get path. Yeah, I don't think we get any of these. Here, I guess like I could always um uh let's just do an e print line and just say um do not get any segments. Nope, that's just weird. Unhappy face. Why is that upset at me? Oh, semicolon. That's why. Okay, so no no unhappy face. So it's not reading that. I'm trying to do HP code not found. I'm trying to do an empty body. Not found is a 404. That's implementing display. Uh, we have a response that builds off of here. Yeah, okay, so build creates this with the code. So that should be a 404 when it hits here. I take the response that we've got, we build it, and we write that out. out. You like this approach? You're straight up writing strings to stream? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's like, I mean, I'm kind of writing, just writing strings to stream. I'm just sort of building it out, sort of like together. Um, but debugging why I'm getting a 200 okay, I need a, tr I need a trace. That's pretty much what I need. I need to like to be able to trace a specific thing that's going on and figure out like, why am I getting a 200 okay? Because that's what I'm getting back out of here, right? We're just getting a 200 okay. And if I remove you, 200 okay, 200 okay. Yeah, this is all 200 okay. And that doesn't, nobody returned for response. Okay. I'm matching. Okay, you predicted this. Uh, I must have missed that. Sorry about that. You're predicting, uh, you're, you're matching the quotes before the first slash. Oh, it's before the first slash. It's before this first slash? Why are you, no, stop. So when I do next, okay, so is this the reason, hence your trim that matches? Okay, so let's, let's implement your trim. So you do trim matches. So path, before we split, we're gonna do, returns a string slice with all the prefixes and suffixes that match. Okay, so do that. And then, there, okay. And then we split on you. Then I get the first one. But what do we have? It's probably going to be nothing at all. So if we, if we just do this, hey, we got that ABC back. Okay, that works. That's good. Uh, and if I go to nothing at all like you, that's 200 okay, 200 okay. Go to something random, 404 not found. That's, that's what it was. The, the trim matches was exactly the problem. You could have also used skip one, but I don't trust that. It always starts with a slash. Yeah, that's that's true. I think I think that this is a much better solution. So thank you for that, Asitsu. And also thank you for that super cuber. You would have used something like strip prefix. Oh, strip prefix could work too. But I could also see that if you add in a slash on the end too, that could like cause weird problems. So this gets rid of that as well. So like everything is always consistent. So I don't know. I I like I think I like this one. So there we go. So if we're in nothing, do the home request. If we're on echo, process the echo handler. If we get this, we do not found, and otherwise we bail and get no segments. Excellent, okay. Now, we are missing some uh, response types. So we need, we need headers now. So we need to say like what type of content this is. So text plane, and then we need to figure out what the content length is which is gonna be pretty simple because, well, it's just the body type, right? Which is ABC. And it's just the size of the response body in bytes. Okay. And isn't it? Yeah, okay, that's why it's double because it's a CRLF and then another CRLF to mark the end of the headers. Now, uh, I think what we should do is for our response, is create a builder for the response here. Because we have code, we have body, this is just a string, 
I could implement a a type on this. I feel like maybe we should do a type on this too. And then that should I do that? Maybe. Uh we could also do another function for for grab the headers. Maybe we should do that. So this would be like a private function. So we need a content type. So so the content type header, this is going to have to be a probably a full string. I mean, it could be a static string, and that could work too. Yeah, I could argue that slash echo slash ABC slash shouldn't match that route, but it doesn't matter for this project. Yeah, it does. that's very right. And so that's one of those things where like, if we're trying to do this for like a real thing that you were trying to sell or have like actual customers for, there's a lot more considerations for the path handling. About the lifetimes, maybe you can get a simple example in the Rust playground. You can take a look at it. Oh, oh, that Limonox was talking about. Okay. All right, so content type. So right now we have text plane if there's a body. And so I kind of think that I want to now set this to be an option with a string inside. Because if we do that, then I want this body is going to be either nothing at all. So what if I do something like this? Body unwrap or default, which should be an empty string. Uh, can, I, can I do an as ref? Oh, because there's no default. I mean, I could clone it, but I don't want to take it. Wait, isn't there like a cloned? Or was that, was that, that was something else that I cloned. I don't want to clone the option. I thought there was like a, a cloned one. Why even have the build maybe do all the work in a respond function? Uh, I mostly had the build because I know that there's like some more things with headers I wanted to do. And I don't want this already, let's see, this already has some other stuff in here. And so I don't want to, I don't want to sort of like combine those two together. It just felt, it feels to me easier with separate rights. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. It's like basically stream right, stream right, stream right, stream right, and then, and then we flush it. I hadn't thought about that at all. We could do that. So instead of stream right all, we just stream right. I don't know. I, I'm going back and forth on that. Because like this one is actually, this one is going to not make it that hard either. Because once I just have these in, that I'm just throwing these into a format. I don't know. I can see both. Uh, I can see both ideas. Um, so if I clone, that clones the the option itself, which is not what I want, but it'll work. If let some body write stream body, yeah, that's that's true too. Otherwise, it's just sort of an empty stream string, which is fine. Although in this case, I need to add in the headers. Oh, okay, so then I would just get a, a vector of headers based upon whether or not I need them. So like instead of content type header, I would be doing something like give me headers in here. I store them inside and then I can loop through those and then write out all of the headers. Yeah, I can definitely see that. I could also see the response becoming instead of a format like this, becoming a vector of just sort of things and then then joining on nothing, and then writing that out all at once. Yeah, there's definitely multiple ways for us to, to deal with this. Uh, I do not mind the idea of multiple functions for each of these, though, uh, mostly because we can just sort of, well, deal with it. So in this case, this is a string content type. Now, yeah, OK, so headers, content type. Aren't these supposed to be all lowercase? Are, isn't like an HTTP, like these have to be lowercase um, text, plain. Oh, no, it's it too. You're still, okay, you're still going into that. Oh, it's case insensitive. So it doesn't actually matter. That works. Okay, so if I do this, we two owned you. That gives us a content type header. And then we have a function um, content length header. So in this case, you're going to have to be an option. Uh, and then uh, you'll be a string. So we'll do let some, I need, I need to copy the body. 
So self that body, and then you can be really an as ref. Otherwise, we're gonna have to do an early return of a nun. Once we have this, I wanna get the length of you as bytes, right? So can I get the length of you as bytes? So like let our length equals body as bytes length. And then we're gonna return a sum format. And then this is gonna be content length, length, CRLF, like that. So then that gives us those two headers. So then headers go right in here. So theoretic, yes, yeah, so this is where this is where the response of the string comes. It gets easier to do the writes independently anymore instead of the build, which so I can I can now see your your argument for that supercuber that makes a lot of, a lot more sense. Drinks do hello, how are you doing today? If if I wanted this to be an evil server, I could um, because it's case insensitive. We could just have it be a uh, random case every single time. And then it's just like, hey, it's your it's a case insensitive. We don't care. We're following the spec. Yeah, so if I do, okay, so what what it gets sent out first? It's first this HTTP 1.1, right? So we do that plus the code. So if I grab you, so if I were to do something like stream just a single write, wrong okay i want right buffer that as bytes context um so this is writing this is not the header this is the protocol so writing protocol you do that what do you return do you return anything at all a u size of how many bytes were written which i don't think i care about uh, thanks for the stream. You're enjoying learning Rust through wa uh, through watching while coding C sharp. Uh, hopefully, it's not too confusing, like with the you know multiple like like watching one language while coding in another another. But I've done that myself, so I guess actually it's probably not that hard. But uh, anyways, thanks. I'm uh, hope hopefully it's helpful. Okay, so if I if I do that now, next one was the code, right? And we also we always have a code, so. We do a stream, write, uh, just the code. How did I get that in build? Write, because it's a, it implements display. Will that just work here? Can I do sponsor code, and then I need, oh, I need the CRLF here, don't I? Yeah, I need CRLF right here after the code. So that means format, probably. We are, Accepting that we are not, it's not what I wanted, uh, that we are not super efficient, and that's okay. So we do that, uh, response code. So then we're gonna have that. So it gives us the code, and then why did I put, okay, comma there, and then R N. Okay, so then if the body, so then we just say, okay, if response.body, actually we can just do an if let sum. So if let sum, this gives us the body equals, I don't want to take ownership of this. So we'll just do a reference to response.body. Okay, so if let sum, we now have the body. If we have the body, that also means we have to have the headers. So we're gonna do a stream write, and then the first header is the content type. So that's a string, right? So we just do a content um, response, content type header as bytes, like that, okay. Oh, and these need to be context too, don't I? Context, um, this is, writing HTTP code, writing uh, content type header. Okay, response content length header. Oh, because you gave me an option string. This is safe 
Okay, so this should be safe to unwrap. So, um, missing, uh, I mean, this is missing body, so I'm just gonna unwrap you. Should be safe. As bites, context is gonna be, uh, writing content length, header. Okay, so we get all those, and then I want to, Stream right, all the okay. So then another RN. This actually should come out after the body, right? So like, if we really think about this, this is we start with write protocol, write code, write headers. We only have headers for for the body. That comes out here now. Uh, you need to be as bytes, okay. Uh, then once we have that, then it's the body. Uh, so because of this, this is not going to be an if left sum. This is really just going to be if response dot body is sum. That's that's all we really care about. If you are sum, then we add these headers in. Then we add in this uh, uh, new line, and then then we can do an if let some body response dot body then we're going to write uh the body as bytes why won't you let me do context what's wrong oh uh because it's stream dot right context this is writing body do that okay you're happy and then that means all of you are done we don't need any more, and then we flush. Okay, tons of errors. Because in this body, this is now a default. So this is a sum, string new, because this can be a none. Still not doing anything with methods. That's fine. Uh, result that must be used. Yes, I forgot the question mark. Build is never used, so we can get rid of you now. And unused import. Okay. Content length isn't required. Stream termination can be used instead, but I don't know if that works for HTTP2. Yeah, well, this is HTTP 1.1, so it probably isn't required directly, but I believe that it's required for this challenge because they specifically said they're going to look for it. Or at least I think they said they're going to look for it. That kind of makes sense. Um, but let's, uh, let's see if this works. So we have, we have you running here. If go through our tests so if we go to here we get 200 okay either we have no headers coming in okay that makes sense if we go to just something random we get a 404 not found if we go to echo abc content type type text plane content length three and our preview is abc and if we do a bunch more our content length is much higher so i think that that works so if we, uh, do, let's see what we got here. So we are responding with a body. Let's see if this works. Oh, the right, the right method for comparison after I'm done. Okay. Ooh, and I've test the past. Okay. And let's see what they were looking for. It's hard to tell what they were looking for, but apparently that was it. Yeah. Test passed for respond with body. Excellent. Uh, let's take a look at what you had. Nope, that was a Sitsu's. Uh, okay, so this is U centered right response code U32. Okay, so we do that. Oh, so you write to stream HP 101. So you do all that stuff and then you pass in the response code. Okay. If let somebody, you write to stream content type, text plane. Okay, you do all that stuff. Oh, okay, I see what you're doing. And then stream flesh. Yeah, so instead of okay, I, I, I like that. I like that that macro a little bit more. So in our response is where we spent most of this time here. Now I do like let's see, so this would be in we just do the right macro like that. We pass it the stream, and then this would just be 
Wait, are you you're saying we don't need to do the bites? Oh, that's cool. So, and then uh, we do our context like this. Okay, so that makes sense. I like that. So if I were to change this, this becomes right like that. Stream, I don't need the format at all anymore. We just have the response code new line. We do that. Okay, so that's our code. And then we have our headers. So in this case, it becomes, whoa, what did I do? Right, type header as bytes. Okay, so we just do that. Oh, it already has those in there. So we just do like that, this. So writing headers. And then I want another one like you. Okay, so then that becomes, if we have the body, we write the headers in. And then we add in the body. Oh, this ends the headers. So right, we have that. Oh, uh, to add the stream. Okay. And then if we, if we have the body, then we do another right. Stream body. Okay, we just throw the body in like that. And then context writing body. Okay. It's, uh, yeah, this is much nicer. I like it. I like it a lot. And then we flash and context. So that should be fine. And let's go ahead and double check that this still works. Um, switched to write macro. Thanks. Okay. Putting that up. Oh, it's the bang. Every time I keep on forgetting that I can't do bang like that. At least if I'm using double quotes. I think I could do that if I use single quotes. All right, so let's go ahead and push this up and hopefully everything should still work. Another advantage is that this approach avoids almost all allocations, which is nice, yes. Okay, still passing, excellent. We'll mark that stage as complete.